right. Shalom and shalom to one and to all. What a blessing it is to be in the beginning of another week to serve God, to please God, to go out and help others who are in need and to truly show forth God's goodness. Woo! What a blessing. What a blessing it is. What a blessing it is to be able to help people, right? To be able to be God's hands and feet here in this land. I love it. I just love it too much. Love it too much. What a blessing it is. Good to see you all. Good to see you, Tammy and Stacia. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful day. And for some of you, a new week. For us, of course, our week starts yesterday. First day of the week, that's yesterday for us over in Israel here. And uh, but you know what's exciting is that uh, God has great, great plans for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen? Now, uh, let's start out with saying welcome to the the good news from the Galilee, the prayer hotline. Uh, one second, get this thing stable. Yeah, it's good Good news from the Galilee. It's the prayer hotline. And we're always about the Father's business, reading the prophetic word, uh, and trying to do his will here in the Galilee, Israel. Um, and throughout the land of Israel, actually. Housing Holocaust survivors coming up soon, doing events where we help immigrants, uh, got the prayer house going. It's just a great blessing to be able to serve God together as his disciples. Disciples. That is it. So, whoever has a prayer request, please feel free to write your prayer request down. And we want to be praying for you. Obviously, today is a warm day. And uh, I'm going to be picking up my son. And we are going to be uh, having a little fun take father-son little uh, film shoot together. Isn't that going to be great? Little father-son film shoot together. I think Joshua Aaron is going to be doing that. So that's going to be exciting. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. But um, I wanted to talk to you guys about something super duper special today. Super duper special. Do you know what it is? It's called discipleship. It's called discipleship. Make sure this is nice and cool. Uh, you know what we could do? Make sure it's nice and cool. Uh, discipleship is where what is what's up. Discipleship is what God is doing in this time. I'm just put this right here on the holder. There we are. There we are. There we are. Good. Discipleship is what God is doing in the earth at this time uh, and actually for quite some time. And discipleship is what we need to be doing. Do you realize that we need to be doing discipleship? If we're not discipling, we're probably not disciples. If we're not under authority, we probably don't deserve to have authority. If we're not part of a congregation uh, and, and uh, an active part where we're helping, it doesn't have to be attending a building, but part of a community of faith, not forsaking that, well then we probably, probably, most likely, are not uh, discipling other people. We're probably not. And do you know that discipleship is so, so important to God? It's like something very, very Galilean. Discipleship is something very, very Galilean. And it's something very amazing. Now, has anyone here ever been discipled at all? Now, what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to put here a, uh, I'm going to pin to the top you're going to see that I'm going to pin to the top a, hey, good to see you, Hana. Good to see you, uh, Cindy, Cartsona, Stacia. Good to see you all, Tammy. God bless you. Please write your prayer requests, and uh, we want to be praying for you today as we do every day. Mark, great to see you. Please write your prayer requests as we want to be praying for you today. We want to be blessing you today, and, and it's just going to be wonderful. So uh, what we've been talking about today so far is that this is good news from the Galilee. There's a lot of bad news out there. And it's so great to have good news from the Galilee. It's so great to get 
God's perspective and his word on things as we go through this life and we, we just know that we're here to serve God, to do his will. And we want to do his will and part of his will is discipleship. It's the word discipleship. We're disciples, my friends. We are his disciples. And now, what does it mean to be disciples? Now, around the world, you have different versions of discipleship. Now, I'll confess. I just saw just saw Star Wars uh, Episode 9 and actually Star Wars Episode 8. I just saw both those recently, really recently, just recently. And... Star Wars has a very big aspect of discipleship in it. It, ha it talks about various things like the, the rebellion and uh, going against the empire. Of course, I think in my in Jewish mind, I think rebellion, that's like the Maccabees. That's like the, the, uh, the disciples against the empire. You mean the Roman Empire or the Grecian Empire or the, uh, you know, even the Turkish Empire. And then finally having a, a return to the homeland. Wow, but a big part of this movie is not just about a rebellion or a resistance or a, uh, or a righteous remnant rallying. It's not just about that. Some of what this Star Wars movie that I saw, there's quite a lot of Star Wars movies. If you know how many Star Wars there, movies there are, please write it in the comments. If you know how many total Star Wars movies there are, because there's, as far as I know, as far as I know, there's nine nine movies I believe I might be wrong and uh, so episode 9 talks about a new hey, good to see you Julie Christina good to see you guys good to see you we were talking about discipleship and how important discipleship is and being a disciple and part of being a disciple is discipling others Part of being a disciple is discipling others. It is. Ah, too bad. Is it just for women? No, no. Is it just for men? No. It's even for kids. Even for kids, part of, of, of raising kids is discipling them. Part of the kids being friends with other kids is discipling the other kids. It's, it's, it's a core of who the Galileans are. It's a core of who the disciples were. It's a core of what we all should be and need to be in this beautiful season that we're alive and we're enjoying. So discipleship, is that in the Bible or is that just in a Star Wars movie? Well, no, it's not just in a Star Wars movie, but do you know how in the Star Wars movie you had this, this um, you have a mentor, he's like a Jedi master, yes? Then you have a Padawan. Padawan is a Jedi training. He's like a young, young Jedi training. That's in a Star Wars movie, okay? Now the same thing goes is in the samurai culture in Japan, get rid of those. In Japan, in the samurai culture, you would have a, um, you would have a, uh, a master, a samurai, samurai. Then you have a young guy training to become a samurai. Good to see you, Sherry. Good to see you, Fiona. Julie, woo -woo, write your prayer requests. We would love to pray for you here as a team. And don't forget, if somehow we're not able to pray for you, I'm not able to pray for you now, but we have a team that prints out the prayer requests and we're able to go through them and pray over them later. So don't worry. Our team at Vertical Galley House of Prayer likes to pray directly vertical to God, but we also like to minister to other people, and that is amazing. We've been talking about discipleship and the importance of discipleship. Let me tell you what. Um, in the ancient Spartan, ancient Greece, right? In, you had Sparta, right? They would have discipleship. In, in a way that the fathers would take the, the young men or the, the sons or whoever and they would train them and say the, the life of a Spartan is that you must learn how to fight. You must learn. You must learn how to fight. And, uh, and so they'd say you have to go out into the cold at night and survive. You have to kill an animal and, and you know, you have to find out how to survive uh, on your own. You have to be tough. So the Spartans would do their form of discipleship. Discipleship is in a lot of different cultures, 
But a big part of that word, which is no fun, is the word discipline. Discipline is a huge part of the word disciple. <laughs> I know that's not a fun word, and I'm a, I like to have fun. So for me, when I first searched, searched this land to find where I would be discipled, because uh, all of us must be discipled, and some people say, but I'm already a believer. Well, let me ask you this. When a baby is born, is that, is that he's good, he's finished, he's done, right? When a baby's born? Or is that really the beginning of their life of discipleship? Is that the very first step? Don't they need, need to learn how to eat? Don't they need to learn how to uh, get dressed? Don't they need to learn what is uh, right, what is wrong, what is uh, acceptable, what is unacceptable, what is uh, the life of a disciple? Uh, that's what happens when a baby's born. It's not like, and so some people say, well, I'm born, I done been born again, son. I done been born again. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But is that the end of the story? Does that mean, no, that's the beginning. That's the beginning of your discipleship. That's the beginning. Great. Now you're, you're in the beginning. Now we got to go through the whole discipleship. And is that like a core seven point course you can do it at your own speed no no it's walking through life now some people call that could call that a mentor some people could call that but there's different than just a mentor to teach you something there's going through problems do you know that failure is one of the greatest uh, things you can learn from from failure you can learn from failure and that's a great and beautiful thing I hope we all will learn from times we failed and learn and grow from that and uh, to become amazing disciples. Uh, you can look, here's the difference between a person who is a disciple and someone who says, I don't need to learn anything. I, I learned everything I need to. A person who's a, a, a disciple can learn from everything, okay? A person who's not a disciple will say, I already know everything. I know everything there is to know and I don't need to learn from anyone. A disciple can even learn from a very bad speech. Let's just say someone gave a very horrible message, sermon, whatever, okay? And a disciple could sit there, listen, and say, hmm, why was this sermon so horrible? Why? Well, let's see, it didn't have any personal application. Hmm, I can learn from that. It wasn't engaging at all extremely boring, I can learn that, wow, if he would have thrown in perhaps some funny stories, maybe some personal examples, uh, I don't know, I would have maybe listened better, I would have been more uh, engaged. This is the worst, you know, uh, the worst presentation I've ever been to in my life. But I'm a disciple, I can learn from that. I can grow. Every experience you can grow uh, as a disciple. That's what we want to do. We want to be growing and learning and also teaching others all the time. So, is this what Yeshua, how, how did Yeshua teach? Did he disciple? Yes, he did. Did the disciples disciple? Yes, they did. Did even those like Paul take a disciple? Yes, Timothy, Barnabas, yes. Discipleship is a huge part of this land. I don't know if you know, but every young person who's, who's a, who's a uh, faith-based person, they could be orthodox, they all are considered talmidim, or disciples. They, what they do is they go and they find a, a mentor or a rabbi, and they'll put themselves under that mentor or that rabbi, and they will then learn and receive whatever they can receive. And sometimes the rabbi might say, look, like for example, I'll give you I'll give you one example. There's many many funny stories and different stories about the engagement of a teacher and a student, a master and a young padawan, a samurai, young samurai in training. Okay, so what it is is you'd have here's one story. I'll throw one story out to you. There was a rabbi, and he's sitting there with all his students. Yeah, and. Um, Suddenly, a, a student comes. Uh, a student comes in and says, "Rabbi, I want to be your. I want to be your your disciple. I want to learn all the wisdom you have. Teach me all the wisdom you have, please." And then the rabbi says, "Okay, okay. Come back. 
Come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow, please. And, uh, and so the, 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 the student says, I'm ready to learn today, though. That's okay. Come back tomorrow, please. So the student says, I'll come back tomorrow. So he goes, and he comes back the next day. The next day, he says, Rabbi, Rabbi, I want to be your disciple. I want to learn all the wisdom that you have. Okay, okay. Come back tomorrow, please. The student says, this is kind of strange. This guy's a little strange. Maybe I don't want to be his disciple. I don't know. Is he really, is he really worth all that? Is he really worth me coming back again and again and again? Fine, I'll try one more time. Goes back to him the next day. Rabbi, Rabbi, I want to be your disciple. I want to learn all of the wisdom of the Torah that you know. Teach me it all. Okay. Take a seat. And so then the, the student's like, thank you. But uh, why didn't you just say that to me right away? He said, well, I wanted to see if you were able to be a disciple. If you had determination if you valued what I am going to say enough to, to uh, contribute effort, not just going to be handed to you there. You got to contribute. You got to contribute effort. I had to see if you are a true disciple. So I go, okay. Uh, and if I told you I'm a true disciple, it wouldn't be good enough. I have to see, you know, see? So we all have to contribute effort in order to show that we're ready to be discipled. And the first step of discipleship in my discipleship, and I was actually discipled under a few different people throughout, throughout Israel, and even friends from, the, from uh, in different places. I was able, even in Canada, I was able to learn and grow from various people, okay? I don't know if any of you have been discipled or, or been able to be in a scenario of being discipled. One of the first things that I was asked to say is to say out loud, I can be wrong about something, sometime. I can be wrong. I have the ability to be wrong, sometime, about something. Now that's, that can be very hard for someone to say because they might say, wait a minute, what exactly am I wrong about? Or I'm not wrong about anything. I got it all covered. So that person is example of someone who's not a disciple. I don't need to learn anything, especially I don't need to learn anything from anybody. I've got everything I need right up here. I'm good. Thank you very much. I got everything. Me and Yeshua, man, that is all I ever will need. Well, that's not what the Bible says. It, it's, it's us and Yeshua, of course, but God also, Yeshua, exhibited the fact that discipleship, and in fact, he commanded us to go and make converts. Oh no, uh-uh. Converts, uh-uh. He said, go and make disciples. Aha, go, now the plot thickens. Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to do and observe all the things that I've taught you, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching, discipling, teaching, not converts. I think that word there is a little bit sometimes uh, not the correct word there. So, Matthew 28, 19, go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to do and observe all that I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's a command by, guess what? By our discipler or by our rabbi. Our rabbi has given us an order and we need to go and make disciples. Now, does anyone have a prayer request? Has anyone written a prayer request in here already? Welcome to Good News from the Galilee. Welcome to the daily prayer hotline where we pray for one another and we share our hearts. And we today, we talk about different subjects. We've talked about what it means to be the acceptable year of the Lord. We've talked about freedom from slavery. We've talked about Aliyah. We've talked about uh, what does it mean? What, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? We're, we're talking about today. We've talked about lots of things. Today we're talking about discipleship. Every day we have a different cool subject. Has anyone here been discipled ever before? If you have, please tell me about your experience. I'd love to know. Is there anyone here who is discipling someone right now? 
why, why, please do, do share some of those experiences because even a young child can be a discipler. Do you know that? You can actually, they can say, hey, would you like to have your friends over? Would you like to share with them some of the cool things that God is showing you? Would you uh, like to have a little tea party? And sometimes children need other children who are stronger in the Lord to be able to share some of their journey. Now, no one's going to be the perfect person. Because if you try to find the perfect, perfect, perfect person, you're never going to find it. Yeshua is our discipler our rabbi and he is perfect but when we when we connect with other people everyone has their journey but you can learn from that you can learn from that journey and you can um, you can learn from from even from mistakes that's what I said failure is the greatest discipler and the best thing is if you don't have to make all the mistakes yourself the best thing is if you can learn from others people's mistakes like uh, like um, for example let me tell you a story. Many years ago, I tried to open a church down by the Thames. And it, it failed because I wasn't able to get everyone in the door because I, it was too close to the water. What, you know, whatever. Just I'm just making up an example. You're like, wow, well, I wouldn't want to put my church entrance door on facing the Thames River in London because people can't get in the church. And see, well, you can learn from you can learn from other people's experiences. Are we sharing our experiences, even our failures with people, so they can learn and they can grow from hearing how the life of a disciple was strengthened even through hardship. Welcome, Kimberly Courier. Welcome, Pam Herman. Good to see you. We were just opening up our Bibles. We were turning to Luke chapter 6, verse 40, and we were talking about how, how there's no perfect teacher. We were talking about how no student, is that's in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, no student is above his master. Isn't that interesting? And you can, but, but every student, every master can learn from his students. Do you know that? every master that and this is what they say uh, a famous famous saying about discipleship is mikol talmidai iskalti which means in english that's hebrew i have learned from all of my disciples i have been discipled by learning from what the lives of my own disciples so the master can the te the rabbi can learn as well so is there anyone here or do you know anyone who's ever been discipled in any kind of way, in any kind of way, go for it. Is there anyone who's been discipled? Is there anyone here who, yes, who's been discipled, who is being discipled? Is there anyone here who is discipling someone? Yes, so you'll notice that I, by the way, I pinned the link to, uh, the registration for our upcoming amazing, amazing uh, event where you can build your own tabernacle. This tabernacles, this Sukkot, Galilee Sukkot 2020, which we're believing, Lord willing, restriction permitting, that we are going to have a ginormous event with thousands of people here in the Galilee where we're going to build different Sukkot. We're gonna, well, you guys are gonna build different tabernacles and we are going to then go and you're gonna be able to decorate your tabernacle like the Australian one. We'll have the Australian flag in its colors. You'll have a Chinese one with its flag in its colors. The American one, red, white, and blue. You'll have an uh, English one uh, from the UK. You'll have, you'll have various tabernacles and their colors. This will register for the event just register, and if you can't join the physical event, register and you'll be able to join the online event. There's an online event. If something happens and you're not able to join the physical event, definitely join the online like we did for Pentecost, you know, Shavuot, and like we did also for Passover, Sukkot. We had a beautiful online, highly produced event, so we want to invite you to, to join that, even if you can't join, the, uh, join us physically. We believe that it's going to be quite amazing. Okay. What is some of the criteria of disciples? What kind of thing should a disciple do? What kind of thing should a disciple be? 
Are we disciples? Yes. Can a disciple be someone who's not in Israel, not in the Galilee? The answer is absolutely yes, they can. Go and make disciples of all nations. We're all supposed to be disciples. We're not supposed to be just, we're not supposed to be converts. We're supposed to be disciples. And now I'm going to tell you something really, really out there. Every time I tell you guys something really, really out there, here's the out there moment with Chaim today. Do you know that you can start discipling people or they've made a profession of faith? Yes, you can disciple people before they've made a profession of faith. You can already get started. Did you know this? There are certain people who you can already, for example, didn't, isn't that what Yeshua did? Didn't Yeshua, Jesus, before the Galileans, the apostles, before the Galileans uh, made a profession of faith, uh, do you realize that they uh, were being discipled? They were being discipled. That's the way, to quote the Mandalorian, this is the way, to quote the Mandalorian, okay? In Star Wars, you know that that was the way that it was done you'd have a Jedi disciple a Padawan. And the same thing goes for the Word of God. And I'll tell you, it talks about 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. It says, follow me as I follow. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Follow me as I follow the Messiah. Follow me as I follow the Messiah. How cool is that? And uh, we just got to follow the Messiah. And, and we got to follow the example. We got to be an example for others to follow. That's one of the main things in the army. In the army, we have a training where it's like a follow me training. It's like, it's not uh, I sit uh, in a module somewhere. It's like, follow me, do what I do. If you wanna know how to, how to charge, how to charge, you know, in a, in, in a battle, well, follow the commander. The commander will lead. Seems like we might have lost some people there. Had a little bit of a network. Again, sometimes we have a little bit of these network failures. I don't know exactly what why that does happen sometimes, but um, little network failure or something there. But long story short, good to see you, Orvoki Maki. Good to see you, Anko De Vries. Uh, so sorry about that slight delay lag in the signal there. But we were talking about discipleship. We were talking also about how we need to be discipling. And we went ahead and we were reading about 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. It talks about something so amazing. It talks about going from glory to glory. Going from glory to glory. It says, being more and more transformed into God's image. Good to see you, Noga. How are you doing? Uh, going, Being transformed to be more and more like God. That's amazing. But you know, you know, you can't get there on your own. There's certain things that you just can't do on your own. It's The Bible is set in a default mode, and it's a corporate default mode. It's set in a corporate way where, where it's the nation of Israel, the people, the tribes, the children of God. Not just, I know we have a personal relationship with God, of course we do, but we also are set in, a, it's, it's, a, it's a corporate, um, Bible is written to a group of people. In the army, it's a team. The remnant is a team. So I'm just saying, guys, we got to understand that uh, we got to understand that we're part of a team. We can't do it on our own. It says Romans 11, provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. It doesn't say provoke ourselves to jealousy. You know what I mean? Um, and the blessing coming on the nations. That's when they when they bless Israel. They're going to be blessed. Genesis three. Uh, you know, and so you, you got this, you got this, you got this, uh, this hand washes hands. A hand doesn't wash its own hand, you know, Corona being Corona, Corona clean. Uh, it's, it's this coming together. It's Jew and Gentile. You know, I keep saying this every time, but that is what discipleship is all about. It's about saying, wow, in order for us to, uh, second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18, transform from glory to glory to be more and more like him. Well, we learn more and more things about God while we are, while we're together. As we are together, we learn more and more about God. And, uh, 
And uh, that's why it says, forsake not the gathering together of the saints. Don't forsake that because that's, you know, that's the whole thing is we got to be able to um, gather together because each person brings a hymn, each person brings a song, each person brings a word. And uh, you might have read the Bible 20 times. Someone will say something else and, it, and you'll understand a whole new dynamic about who God is. And that's what discipleship is. It's iron sharpening iron. It's, uh, it's this, uh, this, this iron sharpening iron, essentially. So, you know, the other thing is, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth, God says. Yeshua says this. In, uh, you remember when he went over to what we believe is Mount Arbel? I don't know if you, if you, where you think the Great Commission happened. I'd love to hear from you where you think the Great Commission might have happened. Uh, where he says this this verse in, in Matthew 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18, where he says, uh, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. You know, and then, and then he goes and says, you know, now go, make disciples of every nation, you know, teaching them to do and observe all that I've taught you, baptizing, excuse me, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so that is, I believe, on Mount Arbel, which is the mountain right next to us. The mountain right over here. I don't know if you can see it right there. Mount Arbel. That's, that's this beautiful mountain where the Jewish people held out while the Romans attacked. And I'm not going to go into the whole story, but it was gruesome. They surrounded the bottom. They besieged the mountain. They took the top, flaming arrows into the caves where the Jewish people had the food stored and the water cisterns and and the synagogues and whatever they shot in, the catapulted flaming uh, from the Roman catapults in there. Finally, Arbel fell and Josephus writes that uh, they threw the women and children, everyone off the top of the cliff. Very sad, but I believe that that mountain though, before that was where, this was where this Matthew 18 happened, sorry, Matthew 28 verse 18 happened. All authority has been given to me. And he's giving us that authority so that we can disciple. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be great to, to, to you know, um, bring your sheaves with you, bring the harvest with you. The harvest though, again, doesn't say go and make converts. It's not about is something black or white or on or off or, you know, uh, alternate current, direct current. No, no, it's, it's about, is it discipled? Big, a big problem that happens in nations around the world is not that they're a quote-unquote Christian nation or not. That's not what it's about. But that's a Christian nation, or that in Europe is a Christian nation, or that, or that, or that, or that. No. It's about are they discipled? Not about being considered a Christian nation. You know? So does anyone, has anyone written any prayer requests? I'm going to check really quick if you've written any prayer requests over here. Concerning any prayer requests, prayer requests. Aha! Yes. So let's start with praying in this prayer hotline for all those who have yet to be discipled or to find someone to disciple, even if it's just their children. So Lord, we just thank you for this uh, band of brothers and sisters, Lord, who are together called according to your purpose, Lord. And we know that part of your purpose, you've said very clearly, is discipleship. Help us to know, Lord, what does it mean to disciple others, disciple people in the peace of the Lord, disciple people in the word of the Lord, disciple people in in forgiveness, disciple people in love, disciple people. Help us to know what that looks like. How would we disciple people? Ah, and uh, help us to be disciples, to be discipled, to be able to let others speak into our life, to be able to let your 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 community of faith come together and to see the beauty, the potpourri, I like to say, of the various colors and sounds as we, we don't have all the answers in here. We get this as we grow and as we, uh, and, and one brings a song, one brings something that we, we'd never suspect, you know, you'd never suspect. So, um, let's go on. What does a disciple need to do? What does a disciple need to have? Well, just a couple things. In Luke 14, verse 33, he says, you got to be ready to give up everything you have. He who does not forsake everything, uh, Luke 14, 33, is not worthy to be my disciple. That's a big, harsh, bit, bit harsh word there. I mean, he who's not ready to give up everything. It just, I just think that, I think that means, it just means this is, this is how in discipleship you, you ask these questions and you're like, what does he mean by that? And 
and you come to a a understanding and that's the understanding that you have to the best of not just you and yourself you and the people of God in your life I believe that means that when we're tested we need to give up everything when the test comes are we willing to pass that test and give up everything um, you know Luke 9 what is it verse 23 it says deny yourself take up your cross and follow me he who does not deny himself take up his cross and follow me is not worthy to be a disciple you know what does that mean what does that mean deny you know deny yourself well we have we have to know our, our life isn't living live lived just for us we're here for others we're here to disciple others we're here to disciple our kids we're here to bless our our kids and our family and we're here to serve the community uh, help the immigrants disciple the immigrants uh, you know it's great um, we're here to help others um, John 8 31 says we got to hold to his teaching hold fast to the Word of God to his teaching and that's like the only way that we'll be able to gotta hold tight to that otherwise what kind of a disciple would we be if we don't hold fast to his teaching see these are the, these are some components I mean we can't go into the components it would be a lifetime to go into all the components of discipleship we can't do that right now but we can just kind of remember it's fun to remember what is discipleship all about what does it look like and who are we discipling? Who are we walking walking with in this life? And who's walking with us, you know? I know in John 13, it's really beautiful, uh, you know, love one another. This is how, this is the main way people are gonna know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. You know what? I love you guys. I love, I love you guys, I love my family, I love the disciples that are here and uh, I'm just thankful for the love God has given where we say where we have more than beyond words we have a love one one for another you know that's how we know that we're his disciples by the love that's how people know this is how they know what love is you know what is that John 8 verse 31 this is love one another it's like a command a, a disciple a discipleship command if someone's like uh I'm I'm a disciple, but I just like to box people in the face. No, that's not. No, you can't do that. That's not. That's not love. You gotta love one another. This is how they know. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe last one is. Uh, let's think back at the beginning of when this discipleship, when the, when the master, when the, when the Jedi met the Padawan. Jedi master met the Padawan. So that's Yeshua. He was here. This is where discipleship began, is right here in the Galilee, right here by the Sea of Galilee down there. You know, right here in, what is it, John chapter 2, verse 11, uh, was when the, the Cana, first of all, of course, he called them from the boat, leave your boat and follow me. If we're not following Yeshua, then we're definitely not disciples of Yeshua. We've got to be following him uh, right now, following Yeshua right now. So he says, leave everything. Hey, but, 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 but I got to go and bury, bury someone. Look, why don't you let, you know, leave everything, follow me. Even, you know, you don't need to cling on to your house. You cling on to your friends. Just follow me. Just follow me. Leave the nets. But who's going to take it? Leave that. But how's it going to? Leave that. You know? But what am I? I, Nope. Follow me. Just follow me. So that's the first thing is we, disciples got to be following Yeshua. Then I was just going to John 2 really quick is remembering when they're following this guy and they're like, well, it's really cool. Did we choose the right guy to be discipling us? You know, is he really the right guy? Suddenly Cana, right over there, down the road, Cana of Galilee. Uh, and then he's like, pour this water in these jars at the wedding. And you guys have seen The Chosen? Isn't The Chosen a great series? It's a great series. Um, so, so then you have that. You have... Um, you have Yeshua uh, filling jars with water, and the disciples doing that, and and the mom, the mom's like, do whatever he says, and uh, and so Miriam, Mary, Miriam, so uh, then then it turns to wine, water to wine. Suddenly the disciples start to say, wait a minute, this is a bit different, a little bit different of a discipleship than what we're used to. Because they're used to discipleship. Everybody in Israel is used to, you you know, everyone knows about discipleship here. It's, it's everybody's getting discipled. But this is a little bit different. It's a little bit deeper. 
a little bit more challenging. It goes to the heart of hearts. It doesn't just say, hey, are you paying your taxes? Hey, are you uh, taking care of people? Hey, are you? No, it's, it goes deeper. This discipleship ste- steps into the miraculous. This discipleship is, like we said, changes you from glory to glory. Like 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, follow me as I follow Messiah and be an example like, you know, and so that's what we need to do is be. We need to be examples. Let's see who put all prayer requests. Uh, so that's what the word discipleship has to do with discipline. And um, so what I wanted to do is I wrap this up really quick here is that if we are ready to be discipled, God will provide the correct person to, to walk with us in our, in our life. He'll provide. It's there. It's, 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 it does exist. Okay. It's not going to be easy. If you're ready to disciple someone, God will bring that person when you're ready. Because that this is his big goal is make disciples, not make converts. Make disciples. Now, so when we first decided to come up with this uh, discipleship journey in Israel, you know, and we have the short one, which is coming up in uh, September 15th. That's pretty soon. The shorter one, that's like a month long. And uh, two weeks in Jerusalem, two weeks uh, in the Galilee. And uh, meeting the people, blessing the land and... And of course, you just click on AliyahReturnCenter.com. You click on discipleship and you'll see what I'm talking about. But when we first decided, when we first felt the burning passion that this is what we need to be doing is, is uh, you know, you got to read the book, by the way, uh, uh, Divine Mentor. Divine Mentor. So great. So Such a great book. And Spiritual Authority. Got to read that book too. Just Google it. But um, when, I, when we first decided to open up the discipleship school, I thought, wow, look, am I really good enough? Okay, I was ordained, but am I really good enough to be a discipler? Am I all-knowing? Am I? No, we don't have to be all-knowing. You don't have to be all-knowing. All All you have to do is be a disciple. A disciple disciples. You don't have to be all-knowing. No, no. You just, and so when we first opened this discipleship journey, and I do hope you'll sign up. If you see that link there, just click on it. Sign up for the upcoming discipleship journey in Israel, the short one. It's for the fall feasts. The fall feasts coming up uh, in September to October, one month, September 15th to October 15th, something like that. And uh, you get to be here for the feasts, of course. You're here for the uh, uh, Yom Kippur, for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, for Tabernacles, and you're here for the Sukkot and all that. It's great times. I thought, am I adequate? Am I adequate for this great task, this great thing? And the answer is, Hey, even a child is adequate for what God's called him to, to be able to disciple others. Even a child is able is, is able to do that. Oh, here's a little disciple. Oh, right here, right on cue. Right on cue. There's a disciple right here. Hello. Are you a little disciple? Uh-huh. And what are you learning? What are you learning? I'm learning about, about a lot of stuff. Are you learning about responsibility? Uh-huh. Is your, is your Abba discipling you? Uh-huh. Are you are you learning Bible verses? Mm, a little bit. A little bit Bible verse. What's your what's a Bible verse you like, or or any any mm, Bible story you like? I don't know all of it. All the Bible. Touche, touche. Uh, do you know the story of Gideon and the uh, four and the three hundred? Mm, uh-uh. Samson. Uh-uh. <laughs> just... Okay. Hey, but I'm gonna take you. We're gonna go do a, a film shoot together now. Where? With Joshua Aaron. So go quickly upstairs if you want, and then we're gonna go. I'm re- I got. I came here to pick you up. And I'm just gonna say pretty soon. I'm gonna say goodbye to all these people, but just say, hey, Matias, tell them, keep discipling and being discipled, mm-hmm. because it's it'll change your life. <laughs> High five. Do you love your Abba? Mm-hmm. I love you. Mm-hmm. God bless you. Bye. So quickly tell Ema that you're gonna come with me now. Uh-huh, and I'm gonna get the eyeshadow. Quickly, because we got to go. Well, Joshua, Aaron, and I, and you, we're going to do a video. <laughs> okay, uh, that was a little disciple. I was a little disciple. I'm here in the air conditioning because it's a little bit hot outside, so I'm sitting in the car in the air conditioning. Uh, uh, but that was a little, that's why I'm in the car. But just to wrap this up to uh, soft taco, to wrap this soft taco, to wrap this burrito, to wrap this shawarma, to wrap this uh, soft Taco Bell Supreme. Just kidding. No, is that... Um, Discipleship. Then I'm going to pray for you guys. Then we're going to hang up. But discipleship is what, if you want to ask me, I think it's the most important thing of 
life. Of life. The most important thing of life, I think, is discipleship. That is what life is about. The whole thing is a big discipleship. The whole life is like a time of learning for the next next uh, reality, the next dimension, the, the heaven, uh, millennial reign. We're here to know, I mean, are we going to be rulers in the next dimension? Are we going to be, uh, what are we going to be? We're building our, our eternal beings construct through experiences and lessons learned in this discipleship journey called called life that's what that's what life that's what life is it's discipleship so i encourage you all and let's pray uh that we can know about how who we can disciple and how can we be discipled there's a little disciple right there ready to go So Lord, we just pray, we come before you, we want to pray for all of these disciples here that are discipling others, whether it's their children, whether it's their community, whether it's their, uh, whether it's whatever it is, we just pray, Father God, you'll bless them all, keep them all, Lord, help us all to be disciples who are discipling, help us to remember the importance in a land of discipleship, that discipleship is so important. Lord, if it's any at all possible, they could all be here. Lord, we just pray you'd open doors for them to be here and join the upcoming Fall Feasts Journey in Israel, the discipleship program, and just that we can all um, be able to uh, have your grace this, this through every scenario, Lord. Help us to never miss a trial. Every trial that happens is a chance to grow in our discipleship. We know we don't fail any tests with you. We just take them again and again and again and again and again. Help us not to take them again, but to learn whatever the lesson is that we need to learn in every trial and in every everything that we go through in life. Uh, bless our kids, they're our disciples too, and our families. And we just thank you, Lord, for the, the great command, the commission. Go you, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Sorry. Go you into all the world, making uh, disciples of all nations, teaching them to do and observe all that I've taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this word you gave in the Galilee, but we know it's not just for the Galileans. It's for all of your disciples around the world. Amen. Hey, guys, I didn't really get to your prayer requests. I apologize, uh, but I'll make sure to get to them. So keep, go ahead and write them for you. I'm catching you on the replay. Later, we'll be looking and write your prayer requests, and we want to be praying for you. God bless you, disciples of the Most High God. God bless you. Talk to you tomorrow, same time, same channel.